everyone. So I've been out of commission for um <coughs> sorry, I've been out of commission for the last week nearly because last week I didn't really wear makeup because my skin reacted to a cleanser that wasn't of mine. And then as soon as my skin clears up at the weekend, I come down with a head cold. So um I've been feeling really crap for the last few days, but don't worry, by the time you see this, I'm sure I'm gonna be feeling great again. But I have run out of pre-recorded videos and I had to do something for you, so I figured the best video to do would be on how to make myself look half decent when I feel absolutely crap. So these are just a few like kind of tricks, I suppose, or like the kind of makeup I like to use when I need to look um, somewhat healthy, but I don't like to wear a lot of makeup when I'm feeling sick. No, I just have like a head cold or whatever, but this is kind of for anyone who feels sick, no matter what you have, because at the end of the day, we all look like poo when we're feeling unwell. So I should say step one is to hop into the shower, even though it's possibly the last thing you want to do. If you're anything like me, you just want to wallow in your own filth like a swamp monster on the couch under your favorite blanket, but um, that's not going to do anyone any good. And then once you've hopped into the shower and you're like nice and clean again, um, you're definitely ready to start looking like a human. So the first thing I do when I hop out of the shower is to apply a really hydrating serum. You want to do this fairly quickly so as not too much moisture evaporates from the skin. And this will be particularly useful for anyone who has an upset tummy because loss of fluids will definitely leave your skin dehydrated and dull looking. Next, apply a hydrating and radiant under eye cream. You want to add a little bit of luminance to this area, especially when you are sick because it can look quite dark and dull. And if you're a little bit puffy under the eye, make sure you massage it out towards your temples and the ear area because this will help to move the built up fluid out towards the drainage system or the lymph system. Next apply your normal moisturizers afterwards and make sure that this has an SPF in it if you're leaving the house and don't forget your neck as well. Then after a few minutes, once everything has had a chance to soak into the skin, it's a good idea to go over with an oil blotting paper or two if necessary. This will help to remove any excess sebum or oil on the skin and also if any little sweat beads have shown up since moisturizing, you need to get rid of these as well before you apply your foundation. And if your eyes tend to be on the dozy looking side like mine are when I'm sick, it's a good idea to curl your lashes to help you look instantly more awake and healthy. So when it comes to foundation, I definitely don't want to use anything too heavy. You tend to lose color anyhow when you're feeling a bit crap and you don't want to give yourself a mask by any means. So I'm going to use this um, Makeup Atelier Paris Airbrush High Definition Foundation. So when you hear high definition in a um, foundation title, you know it's going to be very natural because it needs to be indetectable on camera. Now this one here, the reason I'm choosing it is because it's sebum and sweat proof, which is perfect for when you're feeling crap because I'm very sweaty at the moment. And um, even though those papers did absorb some of it, it'll still come out throughout the day. So I want something to help keep that at bay. So I'm just gonna pop a little bit of this onto the back of my hand. You really don't need a huge amount. And I'm gonna use a small little buffing brush like this. This is my e.l.f. stipple brush. And this is a light enough foundation. I still want it to match my neck, but it's not very opaque by any means, so you'll still see my skin through the foundation. And if you feel the need to apply a primer before your foundation, go ahead. I just really didn't want to have to add an extra step. And for my under eyes, um, I definitely want something long wearing because I don't want it to sweat off or to crease off if I'm a little bit hot. And when I feel a little bit under the weather, my under eye circles get really dark or if I haven't been sleeping and they tend to go quite a purple color. So I'm gonna use this yellow toned concealer by um, Estee Lauder. It's their double wear stay in place flawless wear concealer. This really, really lasts. And I'm using the color Warm Light. So warm in Estee Lauder land means yellow based, which is the total opposite to MAC, which I usually go by. But this is really good because it'll help counteract the purple tone underneath my eye. And then because it is yellow based, I can use it around the rest of the face to brighten up or counteract any redness as well. And because this concealer, like the Pro Longwear by MAC, is a film forming concealer, it means that it's a really good base for your eyeshadow. It'll set without the need for powder um, on the skin, which is brilliant. So I'll definitely use that all over my lids. 
can help counteract any redness as well because I do get very dark around the eyes in general. For eyeshadow I want to keep the eyes fairly minimal, I don't want to look like again I have a heap of makeup on. So I'm going to use this NYX Love in Paris, I've been using this loads lately, the palette, it's the uh, Parisian Chic one, Parisian Chic, um, but I really really like it, it's a lovely little palette and it's very inexpensive. I'm going to pop that white colour just up here lightly on my brow arch as a very natural highlight. And then I'm going to pop into that middle top colour there, which is a lovely, um, like a champagne highlight colour. It's a little bit like All That Glitters, I think, by MAC. And I'm also going to run that along the main part of my lid. For my crease colour, I'm going to go into this middle shade, which is kind of like Cork by MAC. It's just a very medium toned, basic matte brown. I'm going to work that into the crease and just do my little circular motions and the brush doesn't actually leave the crease and then I'll start going back and forth in little windshield wiper motions. Now I love putting colour under my eyes usually but because I'm my eyes have been getting so dark the last few days I'm going to leave that totally clear. Now rather than put any eyeliner on my eyes because I really couldn't be bothered and I really don't want to have to spend much time taking my makeup off later either especially if I am feeling worse. So what I'm going to do is get a little bit of this matte black eyeshadow with an angled brush and I'm going to press that just along the outer half of my upper lid and that will line it for me. At this stage if my lips are dry I put plenty of chapstick on them which I just have because my lips do tend to get very dry particularly when you're coughing and stuff like that. And then for powder, I don't want to overly mattify the skin because I want to make, you know, to have a little bit of luminosity still coming through, hopefully not the sweat. <laughs> and I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of a loose powder on a brush and just lightly dab it where it normally tends to come off throughout the day. So for me, just lightly over the T-zone. It's just kind of lightly everywhere. You can put it everywhere, but just don't do a heavy a heavy covering of it. Then for eyebrows, um, again I don't want them to look too overdone. I'm going to use a brow marker and lightly fill in any gaps. And I'm just going to brush a light brow gel through them to keep the hairs in place and give them a bit more shape. And then of course to finish off the eyes I'm going to put on plenty of mascara. I'm only going to keep it on the top lash line again though or on the top lashes. And a good tip for anyone who has quite red or bloodshot eyes, if you put a light blue coloured pencil in the waterline, it actually helps to brighten up the eye and make it appear whiter than it is. Another reason for only putting the mascara and makeup on the top lash line as well is if you're coughing or sneezing a lot and your eyes are watering, they're less likely to ruin the makeup on top of the eyes um, if they start to stream. So for the rest of the face, I wanna add a little bit of colour. So I'm gonna use some bronzer and I'm going to apply this very, very um, lightly, but enough, just mainly to the outskirts of my face. So just make it look like I've got a little bit more colour. And then just bring it down onto the neck a wee bit as well, because we mostly tend to be the palest right underneath our chin. I wouldn't really bother contouring my nose when I've got a cold because you're just blowing it constantly and the makeup will tend to come off there anyhow. So to give a little bit more colour to my cheeks, I love using a pink blusher. So I'm going to use Dainty by MAC, which is quite a luminous blusher as well. So again, it'll add a little bit more life to the skin. And I'm not going to apply anything else to my lips just because, again, with coughing and stuff, it's just kind of a pain. I don't really feel like I want to wear lipstick. So that's as much as I'm going to do with the face. Um, it's more than enough makeup when you don't feel like wearing anything at all anyhow. And I hope that anyone else out there who's feeling a bit crap or under the weather gets better soon. And that this helps you if you do have to go out and brave the big bad world when you really, really don't want to. So um, yeah, I hope this is helpful guys. I'll chat to you all really soon and check below for the full list of products. So long guys.